Well, hello, we are back. It is the Long Run live cast from the 40 Runs Running community. I'm Ian Wilkerson, and um, we're here for our weekly chat about all sorts of things running. A um, bit of a change this week because Chris can't be with us, unfortunately. Um, he's otherwise um, otherwise engaged, so um, he won't be here, but we've still got plenty to go on, plenty to talk about, plenty of good folks to talk about it with. And tonight... Our special guest is Kim Tobin, South End, 40 stalwart, all round good egg, fighting her way back from injury. And she is going to come and have a good chat with us tonight about all sorts of things running. It's lovely to see you. Lovely to have you, Kim. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure, as always. Alan's back as well. Alan's back, everybody. Two weeks off, refreshed, well groomed. All done from his. Uh, now, where was he? Um, now we had a vegan festival, didn't we? And what, where have we been for the last two weeks, mate? On mute by the look of it. On, mate. On the festival tour, Ian. Um, two weekends running, so I've still got my wristbands on, as you can see if you're on the watching the the, the podcast. You're first one. Was, first one was the vegan camp out. So it's ten thousand vegans in a field, um, eating. Uh, take away and everything that that's fake about uh vegan food but that was yeah great. make your own punchlines people <laughs> yeah keep them coming and then last week we uh dropped into car fest which is the chris evans charity raising event which this year was combined with a bit of run fest so uh, uh we we dropped in and did a couple of runs as part what of the did run. you, how did that work then well it was two festivals combined into one they normally run at different times of the year but i think because of the covid restrictions lifting late they took a last minute decision to, to combine. Uh, in any effect, during the day, you did your own thing. You went and looked at cards, you went and run. And in the evening, you all came together to uh, uh, um, listen to the music. So we had the best of both worlds. Um, for those that haven't been to Run Fest Run, it's a great vibe. I now know why I can't run very fast because got up close to Steve Cram and Paula Ratcliffe. And if you combine them both together, they're still thinner than me. So I think I've kind of worked out what the secret is to, to breaking world record. A little bit less timber, maybe. But it was a really nice uh, family atmosphere. So I think, you know, if we could do a pink toke over a rum fest run in the next year. And where or was so. that, mate? Where were you? But we were down in um, Hampshire, Navistock Farm, which are, is the home of Jody Schechter. So uh, he's big into his buffalo farming. So uh, halloumi fries and ice cream was on the menu. Obviously, I didn't touch any of that, being a vegan. I had to go and check out the vegan-only stall. Smaller queues. <laughs> but I said... I say, if they got the venues wide. mixed up with those two ones, that could have been quite interesting. I know, yeah, I know, yeah. And it, and it was really good because the beer is so expensive, you can't afford to get drunk anyway. So it's, it's healthy from that point of view as well. Nearly as expensive as having a pint at Wembley. Yeah, nothing's as expensive as having a pint at Wembley, mate. And Toby's here as well. How are you, mate? I am. I'm good, actually. I'm good. It's been a bit busy week, but not bad. Toby's very excited, and everybody at the 40 Rounds Hartford group were very excited on Tuesday when Toby turned up with a new dog, Milo. And um, we don't know whether we're going to post him into doing a few canny crosses or uh, anything like that. But, um, yeah, it was lovely to see him. So we've got a new member of uh, the 40 Rounds um, Hartford group. We definitely, is he coming this week? He's coming. It's, uh, it's a bit out of sale so far, but it limits my running if I... He did do a couple of miles the other day, though, so he set his PB. Oh, did he? So you've had him out running then? Oh, yeah. yeah he's not sitting around. And how's, how different is that then? It's sort of like when you go out for your normal run and when you're out with your dog? Uh, normally you're trying to hold him back because he just wants to go. So he, I, I can see him maybe doing a bit of good pacing work for me. Yeah, but, but so he's not one of these dogs he wants to go sniffing in bushes and stuff like that. There was a few and... emergency stops. Yeah, <laughs> a few where he just stops and it's like, it's like a dead weight, but 
but we, it's only the first one. It's early days. You can learn together, can't you? And Kim, you've just got a dog, haven't you? Yeah, well, she's six months old now. But yeah, we've got a little um, Shih Tzu who lives yeah. up to the name quite often. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not between seven and eight on a friday night so that no be... no hopefully not but no she can actually for a little one she can actually run really fast so um i can see that we might get her at park run maybe one saturday morning oh brilliant well you know when you're back on them you know if you back fully 100 percent, then i'm sure that'll be uh saying this on the agenda um everybody um please feel free to Email us in with any uh, observations that you've got. It's uh, what's the, what's the email address? I always forget. Longrunshow at gmail dot com, and um, also you know we'd love to take your questions. So uh, please fire them in, and we'll do our best to answer them. I mean we're not um, Chris is not with us this week, so um, please you know be patient if you've got queries about the latest um, trainers from Brooks or um, whether. The, such and such a model from Nike is the one to wear during your uh, marathon or anything because we're a little bit in the dark. So we'd love to help you out and we'll be very polite when we'll say we don't know, but we'll do the best that we possibly can. But anything else generally running related, then please, you know, just drop us a line and let us go. I mean, well, one subject that, I mean, I thought that we should talk about because obviously big events are coming back. They're coming back thick and fast. We've got next week, we've got the Brighton Marathon and... The Great North Run, Brighton particularly, will be the first first marathon post first big marathon post uh, post the outbreak of the pandemic. So uh, that'll be interesting to see that goes. And I'm seeing plenty of um, messages from people who are um, contemplating doing their 20 mile long runs. I mean, Alan's a disciple of the Hanson plan, where such uh, such travails don't exist. But um, we um, many of people doing their conventional plans you know they'll be doing a 20 miler in sometime in the next two or three weeks into uh, as they approach their um approach their marathon so uh, i thought we'd have a bit we thought we'd have a bit of a chat about that because i did one yesterday and to be honest toby you've done a few haven't you you know i found it really hard towards the end what's what's your sort of experience of doing the 20 mile training runs yeah how do you get through yeah, we, we and Chris, we, we chuck quite a few in on this block. Um, normally, you sort of get out to 20, do one, stretch to it. I think we've already done three. Um, so we sort of chuck quite a few in. We built up the miles quite quickly. Um, but we did come out of Dorney in April and didn't sort of, we didn't go down too far. So we have already uh, had a nice level to sort of pick up from. Um, but they they don't really get much easier. Um, 20 miles, you know, it's a fair distance. Um, obviously, you try and break it up, is what we normally do. Having having a running partner with you obviously helps. I mean, me and Chris are quite lucky in that respect. Um, but it's one of those, you know, obviously the Facebook room community is quite big. If you can find someone local to you, similar pace, then it's quite nice to sort of get out with someone on those long runs. Yeah, I see that there's a couple of um, a couple of people, a few people are going to Bedford. There's a 20 miler. This week, I mean, there's other ones that have been arranged, particularly in the run up to London. There's one in uh, one in Hillingdon and one in uh, in North West London that um, is off and on. And um, I think I saw someone that was doing one in Manchester as well. You know, Kim, yeah, what's your expect? You've done a marathon, haven't you? Well, you've you got your big button on. Sorry. Can't hear you. Yeah, I've done two. I've done two. I've done, um, if you count the virtual one, I've yeah. done um I did Brighton actually in 2019 and the virtual last year. How did you find doing a 20 miler? Um, truthfully, the first when I trained for Brighton, I did the I remember doing the 20 miler and um messaging my husband just as I was finishing it, coming around the corner and just saying to him, Can you please just open the door for me for a start so that I don't have to put the key in the door so that I can just run straight into the lounge and lay on the floor? because i'm done like i don't know how i did it but mm. i did second time round um i only did 16 miles i only went up to 16 miles and um 
I felt a hell of a lot better. I have to say, I have to confess. Mm. I am, um, and that was with my injury as well. Was that, but, was that as part of the handsome plan, or did you do it? No, that was part of the Tobin, Tobin plan. All oh, right. <laughs> oh, do, you, do you do that yourself then? Do you, do you sort of like devise your own? I think I got one. I used. Um, I think it was like a Lucas Aid one. God knows where I found it. I think it must have been recommended. I found it online anyway, and it worked for me. It was quite a simple one um uh that was the the brighton one i did and i did the same plan but just because of how things worked out mm. i only ever got to 16 miles and i just thought do you know what that's gonna be that's gonna be enough for me and did i was you, fresh, i was much much fresher for the actual day did you find that did you have any concerns that you before you went in that you hadn't done the 20 miler? Did it play on you in the sort of like the final sort of quarter of the plan? Did you think, oh, am I going to have enough? Have I got, have I got enough miles in my legs? Because I didn't do it. I don't think so because I knew that I'd done it before. Hmm. So I knew that, um, yeah, that I knew that I definitely had it in me to do it. And I don't know. I think that with the virtual one, I think there was less pressure to sort of you know worry about times or anything and and weirdly i mean luckily i had um chloe who i know you've had on here um a while ago she paced me for that for the virtual mm. and i did brighton in just over five hours that was my first marathon and then the virtual i did in just over four and a half mm. so take from that what you will yeah but, I, I did this one yesterday it's the second time that i've done i did i did a 20 just sort of like outside a plan just during lockdown just to see what it was like and see if i could do it sort of thing but this is the first one is that i've done in my plan i'm a little bit ahead of because i've had to shift shift a few weeks around because i was supposed to be 20 miles next week and it's a great north next week so i didn't want to do it then so i brought it forward a week and i found it what i would say is that it was absolutely essential to chop it into lumps and not just contemplate this huge because i did I did as as Chris has advised and says that if you do an out to in, if you go out and then turn around and come back home again, but that I think that definitely helps. But I was just, you know, I went out and I had um, I had four gels in my pocket and I just chopped it into lumps of four miles and just had one of them, and then also it helped. I think because I had the mileage going out, I knew that when I got to certain points on the way back, oh right, okay, it's five miles home here four miles and just ticked it along there because it was it was really tough and i think physically I you're saying about gels is good i mean i i do that quite a lot i I'll go out i know my first gels at six miles and then effectively i hit every four miles of a gel and so that really breaks my long runs into four mile chunks because hmm. i know that, that that's a gel and that's almost then you know i can tick that bit off and my next gel is four miles that's all i'm looking at I'm not going out looking at that 20 miles is a big chunk mm. that really helps so yeah. Al, Al, tell us about sort of like the hansen approach to all this that you don't have a 20 mile it, it's not it's not to be fair it's not that different you know if you're looking at the plan across a, a an extended period it's all about time on your feet whichever way you cut the cake it's about putting in enough miles that you've built your base you built your aerobic base and then you can you know you can push on um Kim's done 16 miles. We've got a question from Karen asking about 16 miles. I've done 16 miles. I don't think there's a lot of difference between 16 and 20. I think mm. if you're on your feet for anything over a half, it becomes a, a, a balance between psychological as well as, as, well as physical. Mm. So, you know, what I'd be saying is if you're going to be out over three hours, it's the mental thing that you're starting to, to train as well as your, your body. Um, the the Hanson, you do your 16 miles, but you're doing it on a back of an eight and a 10. So you mm. are already tired. So you're still getting see, this the was, effect of your... This was another thing for my 20 yesterday, you see, which, because I came back and I thought, oh God, yeah, I, I'm i sure everybody's had this. And you must have done him the day that you crashed through the front door. So sort of like, how the hell am I going to run another 10K after this? Absolutely, and yeah. The, but when i sort of sat down and thought about it i thought well 
I did nine miles on Sunday. I did five miles on Monday. I did a 40 session on Tuesday and I did five miles on Wednesday. And today, Thursday, I've gone out and run 20 miles. Now on the day, I'm not going to be doing that at all. I'm going to be, I'd like to think that I'm going to be well rested and going to be in a much better condition to actually do it. So consequently, I didn't, which I think was really key. I didn't try and beat myself up, up about it too much. No, I don't think you should. I don't think you should. And, and everybody will tell you and anyone who's done it will agree that once you're there on the day, it the, the adrenaline and the crowds, even on the virtual, um, we had a lot of people lining the streets of South End and along the seafront that were really spurring us all on. There were lots of people doing it along here. And I'm sure they were in various parts of the country, well, all over the world. But um yeah, you do. And and I just think it's I I treat it as a bit of a sightseeing tour. Like when I did did Brighton, I'd never been to Brighton before. I'd never run around Brighton before, that's for sure. So I kind of like treated it as a kind of a day out almost mm. or a, a few hours, five hours out. Just um, you know, meeting people along the way and you know, seeing sights that you've never seen before. It's a little day trip. You might yeah. be I, more knackered than you usually are at the end of it. I, I saw Paula <laughs> mentioned earlier that she's doing her 20, she's doing 10 with a friend, like, like the second half. I think that's that's great advice, isn't it? To have somebody to tag along with. To, well, I mean, obviously, you're doing a lot of running with Chris anyway, but to get somebody to help you, you know, a bit of company at half time. Yeah, I mean, if it's someone that isn't Chris as well, I mean, <laughs> and that voice is a bit monotone, just goes on and on, you know. <laughs> But you know, but yeah, that's no, definitely. I mean, when we did, as you say, the, the virtual last year, and, and the captain and Billy came along and met us, sort of, I think for the last 10k or something, it might have been a bit more. I mean, that really spurred us all on and just pulled us to the finish line, you know, especially around, you know, when you think back to that October, it was pouring with rain. It was a horrendous day, wasn't it? A horrible day, puddles, and those, yeah, those last six miles were absolutely killer. But um, as you say, you know, there's people around. You know, any car that went past seems to just be tooting at you. I think they're just like, if you're mad enough to be out now, you must be doing the London virtual because yeah. it was just awful. But yeah, you know, it's, as you're going around those, as you say, on the day, those last six miles fly really with the, you know, with the crowd and any other runners you're with as well. You're just, you know, you're looking at the people in front of you and you're just running with them. It makes a massive difference. Another little tip, Ian, for, for the long runs, and it doesn't have to be a 20 because I do it in the 16, is to use, and I think you've mentioned this before, is the compass method. So, yeah. you know, you pick a point, you run out. You know, if you're doing 16, which I often do, you'll run out uh, to come back to go again to out to out to. And suddenly you've done 16 miles. And if you're coming back, that gives you a chance to, to not have to carry your fuel. Yeah. It gives me a chance, who's a bit of a sweaty Betty, to change my gear out halfway through. And suddenly you run four different routes and you've cracked your long distance run. So mm -hmm. yeah, it takes a little bit of planning. Um, but we all know these these long runs are coming. So I mean, this is something I thought about when, you know, when the lockdown started. And I thought, well, are they going to have restrictions a bit like, you know, some other countries where, you know, you're not allowed to go more than five miles from your house and things like that. And I, that's where I was sort of like devising little schemes like that that i could um i could do but um yeah i think there is the mental demand i mean a good book podcast plenty of good music things like that just to keep you going keep you ticking along yeah i think that that's crucial i had um one of my things for the marathon was to ask friends to um think of or, or send me or give me a song to put on my playlist and even now, I think of the, the person that sent me that song if I hear it. So, and that really helps spur me on doing it and during practicing. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, everybody, if you're doing your 20 this week, wish you all the best. I mean, I think that, you know, if you are going to do one, it's a dress rehearsal, you know, get used to, you know, have your breakfast, use your fueling strategy, make sure you've got plenty of fuel. And um, yeah, and we wish you all the best and um, I hope that'd be great. So um, thanks for that. Have we had any other questions on anything else, Al, that we might want to well, talk we've about? We've had lots of comments, um, lots of people, you know, sharing their views on Facebook and YouTube about the the benefits of the, the, the 20 miler versus other alternatives. And 
I think it's it's probably split down the middle looking at the the way the the comments have gone um interesting question is it okay to split a 20 miler over the course of the day I run some in the morning and some in the day life gets in the way I think sometimes you just have to you know I I tend to want to look at my plans across the piece and know mm. that there's given days and given weeks where you're not going to quite manage to do it but you know you do the best you can and if that's going to work for you on a given weekend you know don't don't knock yourself and don't kill yourself don't the Kenyans do that anyway don't they go and fresh out 10 miles and then have a break and then go out and fresh out and that's harder. absolutely yeah what else mate um again more more comments about um splitting the long long miles over the weekend so again quite a few people saying yeah you know do a 10 and a 16 so i seem to have a few handsome fans sitting in the audience tonight as well well so, they've, they've heard your back mate that's why yeah i know they've obviously they were the last two weeks rush to uh, uh rush to sign up and listen in <laughs> so yeah it's it's it looks like we've got a few kind of going out this week so i'll be interested to see whether people still agree with us next week they might come back with their comments having done their 20 milers see what they thought was it good advice or not and i am thinking now that i'm on my plan i mean i did a 17 two weeks ago and so i did a 20 this week and now i've got five six weeks to go and i've got 120 left and i think 12 is the biggest that i've got the rest well no great north run next week but 13. so now yeah, I'm, we're getting, we're getting into was, giving me a real lift because i was here last week saying oh i'm halfway through my plan i've got all these miles to do i can't see the end of the road and now i'm thinking well, I've only got one more. I've only got one really big one to do. So it's given me a real lift to get one, get a good one under my belt, I think. Yeah. Also, I think it's been, um, it's been a long time training, hasn't it? Because the, a lot, some of the, or a lot of them have been cancelled and because of lockdown and what have you, a lot of people started to train and then had to stop and start again. Mm. It feels like you've been doing it forever, I imagine. So, yeah, it's my fourth go, this is. So fourth yeah. one to try and do so that can kind of wear you down mentally as well because yeah. you know in the back of your mind you're thinking god i've been training for this for so flipping long you know and there's the a little bit of pressure there when it that is actually happening now mm. yeah, so yeah I, yeah that's the thing folks it is really happening so <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness question okay. now from robert i'm not sure you guys seen that about cramp does, does anyone else suffer with cramp when out today you got 19 miles Bit cramped set in luckily had 500 meters to go had two 500 yard tailwind salt tablets and a couple of cliff blocks not i mean i think cramps normally normally quite sort of hydration before is quite important for that in general hydration um in you know the days and week leading up to long runs um i'm not sure how you got any uh, uh well that? touch wood i've never really suffered with problems from cramp but i also know i do have to hydrate a lot because i sweat a lot so i think you know throughout my running career i've always been conscious of needing to make sure i'm i'm well hydrated before um if anything now i perhaps you know probably should do a little bit more hydration but i think i've just kind of trained and tuned the body to the point where um again i've kind of got that balance so i can't really comment but i think you're, you're generally right hydration is the key and, and probably more than the hydration, it's the replacement of the salts, you know, the electrolyte drinks and, and getting the, the minerals in balance rather than just slugging back gallons and gallons of water because you can overhydrate as well. And that's yeah. a pretty uncomfortable experience. So, uh, you know, try and avoid that one. You don't want to be sloshing around because we know what that's like, don't we, Chris? If that's not a listen to someone's water, <laughs> slosh around mile after mile, hour after hour. So, yeah. Is there anything else, Toe? We've got anything else. We do. Um, there's an unknown Facebook user here. This is, I Ooh. think we had um, a, a feet question a little a few weeks ago, didn't we? Ooh, Since I'm not on. Just remember, if you're on Facebook, I've chucked a link in there so you can click on it. You can um, authenticate your account so we know who asks his questions rather than the unknown Facebook user. Um, but says, running London next month, what advice would you give for blisters on toes and heels? Because I'm running four or five times a week, I don't get give them time to hear to heal. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. uh, I've tried three or four different types of socks and Vaseline, but still got all all sorts of toes. Any more ideas? Bigger shoes. So, 
th a couple of things I'd say, you know, it is about the fit of your shoe as well as your sock. You know, the blisters will often come because of movement. So look at your lacing, make sure that's kind of locking your foot in. Um, I tend to go for compression socks because it just creates a bit more pressure on the foot and um, stops the foot from from uh, moving around within the within the shoe. And I know there are advocates, I can't remember the names, we can find them and put them in the link where you kind of get the socks with the individual toes. So you're not getting the rubbing between the toes. So, you know, a lot of people sign up mm -hmm. for that. But I, I think it is, unfortunately, it's just finding the right the right socks. And I, I know lots of people that, that spend a lot of money on socks. Other people run long distances without spending a lot of money and never have a problem. So it's more a question of keep persevering, finding the, the method that works for it's you. It's like everything oh, else, isn't it? You just have to experiment, find what works for you. That's the, there's no there's no blueprint for um you know everybody's different it's it you know it is but well, i'd sympathize definitely yeah you seem to be trying the right things trying yeah i mean socks and vaseline but, yeah. the first thing i would have said was socks because i've people you know i've talked to people at work who have just started you know started running and it's um oh i've got blisters what socks you're wearing well i've got some white cotton no you've got to get proper socks Maybe um, something for the to chuck out their favourite brand of socks that are, uh, have helped them overcome or prevented blisters. Yeah. I've done that have before. To do a sock survey. Yeah. yeah, sock survey. Okay, well, time's pushing on. I think it's about time we got to know a little bit more about Kim and we'll have a chat with her. So, um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll have a chat with, with Kim now. <laughs> I mean, the boys will stay around so they can join in. If, you know, feel free to make... Great observations and witty uh, asides, you know. So, so yeah. Kim, thanks ever so much for coming. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about your running journey, how it all started? Oh, okay. Well, I started running six months after I had a mastectomy. So um, I'd put on weight and I wasn't very happy and all previous exercise I'd ever done never really worked and a friend of mine had started to go running it was in the january so it was freezing cold but the good thing was he was going at night so um it was dark and nobody could see what i was wearing which was just as well because it was my son's tracksuit bottoms some primark trainers and an old sweatshirt so i started running down south end seafront um and we just went from post to post until we went from the casino to Chalkwall Station, which and back again, which was about 5k, all told. And um, one day he didn't turn up, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and do this by myself without stopping. Um, and I did, and I thought, oh, do you know what? Actually, I'm getting a bit of a buzz from this. I quite like this. And over a course of a few weeks, I started to lose weight. I was feeling happier and healthier and yeah and I thought you know what I never in a million years thought that I would be a runner but I actually feel I'm gonna actually buy myself some proper running stuff now so I went and got my gait analyzed and um, got some proper running shoes got some sockenies and um, yeah off I went and then I just kept going a little bit further and a little bit further and um, someone said to me you should run a marathon um, my dad had uh, passed away from a, a form of dementia called Lewy body dementia. Um, so I decided to run Brighton Marathon for the Alzheimer's Society. So that's when I just started my, my marathon training. That's when I found the Fordies because I think I'd gone on to YouTube and somehow come across Chris. Um, and obviously that YouTube um video pointed towards um the facebook group and i joined the facebook group when there were probably only about 300 or so members at the time and uh then i went and um to the south end park run and that's where i met met most of the south end forties that were already sort of established which was helen and Nettie and claire and I'm not sure if Chloe was there. There were quite a few of them. Um, 
yeah and th and that was that's pretty much it i was a a full d through and through since then i have been so that that brian was 2019 so you're not actually been running that long then no um well i i started running when i was 50. so yeah. um and i'm 55 next week yeah. next <laughs> no, so, it. Oh, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you got a nice glow on me what do you think <laughs> If you saw the real me, you'd be horrified. <laughs> but um, yes, so uh, yeah, I can't remember what we were talking about now. So yeah, so it was relatively. Uh, so, um, yeah, five, up to doing a marathon was not a not a long period of time then. No, it's a couple of years. A couple of yeah. years. Yeah, where I was just going from kind of like you know I, I was going out three times a week doing like two five k's and one ten k. And then for probably a year, 18 months. And then um, I, when I decided to do Brighton, obviously did the, got a proper training plan and and uh, did the right so up. You also, so yeah, it's been sort of like quite a methodical sort of progress then, you know, to sort of like, and you've, you've obviously been inquisitive enough to look at doing things properly and, you know, by looking yeah. at you doing things and getting your plan and... Mm. Well, I was lucky when I when I decided to run the marathon for the Alzheimer's Society, they hold days for their for their runners. So um, I went along to one of those. And um, yeah, and actually one of the Fordies, Martin Edwards, he was there as well. Anyway, he um, we we yeah, they gave us training plans. They told us how to fuel. We went out for little runs. They taught us a few sort of techniques and stuff like that. They had physios to hand, so if we had any little niggles, we could get those sorted out. It was really good. So um, yeah, so I guess that's why I did it. That must have been where I got that Lucas Aid plan from, or mm. recommended. But um, yeah, so but a Brighton Marathon for me was tough. It was a horrible day. I don't know anyone else has done uh, the, did the 2019. Um, no, I was in the cheer squad, Kim. I do remember you uh, when you came to the oranges. Remember the oranges? I do. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think Fletch filmed me, didn't he? Because because I was being filmed, Mrs. Vane here decides, you know, I, I pretended I was fine. So I trotted past looking really like I was all right. But inside... That's what we all do, though. I it? was dying. See a camera. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, no, it's fine. And then I probably shouldn't say this for people that are doing it, but um, you go up that really long street, don't you, to Hove, and then you go all the way back again to the power station. <laughs> just say it to the power yeah, station. The power station, which is just like. <laughs> so that'd be a good time for people to put their music on and just get their head down. But, that what you're uh, uh, do you know what you say in that? That was the point. I, I never really hit a wall physically but I hit the wall mentally and I thought I need something to cheer me up and I think I had um I, I downloaded Graham Norton's Radio 2 show that that previous day and I can remember laughing out loud at some of the things that he was saying on there so that <laughs> Graham Norton got me through the, the power station bit. What's a grain of fame yeah yeah, yeah I love it. You really know. Know. long run podcast can get you through how many episodes are we into now is it 10 I've missed a few 11. 11. See, there you go. This is number, this is number 11. I know. We've not been closed down yet. It's amazing. You know, if you um, <laughs> I do love a podcast. <laughs> so, so, so the cameras, though, is that um, Kim then obviously got implemented into us on our socials, didn't she? You yeah. have a good picture of 40s, don't you? Say that again. You do like the uh, 40 pictures, don't you? Making sure the socials are all up to date. Well, yeah. See, somehow. Chris came to Chris came to Southend Park Run. Uh, I think it was like January 2020, so just before lockdown actually. And because obviously I'm a member of the running club, and and we have a separate um, accounts for the running club. So Chris has got the 40 runs, and then we've got the 40 runs running club Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. So yeah he asked me if i would um kind of take over that and uh i try and keep that updated as much as i can but yeah it, it, anyone from who belongs to the club if they just want to tag us in any instagram or facebook post and then i can um repost it on our pages so that would be nice but we've got we've got our main groups haven't we that 
um, regularly. Obviously, the South End lot are always mm. up for a photo. And um, we've got um, Luton with Louise. And we've got the other Louise in, oh gosh, I'm forgetting who that, where they belong. We've got, we've got Louise in Northampton. Was it another Louise in Coventry? It's what yeah. they're called Louise, isn't it? It's nice yeah. and easy. Just say Louise. Louise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good fun. And it's nice to see what everyone's doing. Yeah, I find that, you know, it's great to see, just being nosy and what people are up to. And it, it, it's real, it's a massive support, isn't it? For, you know, particularly if you're doing events. And I mean, I, I, joining the Hartford groups, one of the best things I've done. And like, I went, we went on Tuesday and there's about five or six people there. And they're all sort of like, oh, yeah, well, I'm doing 15 on Tuesday. I've got my 20 mile next week and all that. And you just bounce. And like, you turn up and you're like, oh, I feel terrible. I've had a terrible week. And then, but then they'll turn around and say, yeah, my husband's got the up with me, you know, I've got the mm -hmm. oh, I've been terrible to live with that. And it makes you feel normal. It's great to have that sort of it, it's great to have informal support as well as technical and technical support as well, isn't it? I find. Yeah, I mean I've made some great friends in South End through Foldies. Yeah. Yeah. We're, but they're a brilliant support network as well, if uh, if anyone's not feeling too great. And during the lockdown, we had the book club as well, didn't we? Yes, Mr. Bowley. We did, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. We, we, we taught a few people to read. Uh -huh. It was Alan's idea. He said to me one day, why don't we, why don't we, I can't even remember. We must have read a book. No, both... no, no I'm, I'm going to correct you. You read a book and you said it would be good for me to read it. And then okay. I said, why don't we get everyone to read it? So yeah, but I think we've read that book, ironically. No. <laughs> That was um, Born to Run, wasn't Born it? Born to Run, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that book so much. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so we just said, the thing was, I guess it was because it was locked down and, you know, we weren't sort of going out and seeing people as much. And having the Zoom calls for book club was just such a great way of just chat, obviously chatting about our passion of running and also um, getting to see everybody and find it because the good regardless of what book it was that we've been reading, we still all ended up talking about what runs we'd done or what injuries yeah. we've got and blah de blah But we were so lucky to get um, the guests that we had on that, weren't we? Yeah, we got, yeah, that pulled it out of the bag. That was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, because we had Paul Tonkinson, who was absolutely brilliant, such a lovely guy. Um, and if you've read his book, so humble so humble from his his backgrounds um and okay, then he's got a rival podcast so yeah he's got a rival podcast. Too much. but yeah if any if you've not heard um yeah paul tonkinson the uh comedian uh 26.2 miles happiness i think his book's called that's it it's a, yeah. it's a really good it's a great read about his uh well it's about his running journey and his uh, bid to um break three hours at the um at the london marathon but it's not like an elite book and First, um, you know, it, the guy's a stand-up comedian. He's a really good, really talented writer. It's a great read, really yeah. good. And then then you really pulled it out of the bag, didn't you? Well, we did. It was really – we were a little bit cheeky, weren't we? Because we read Dean Conaz's book and then just put on Instagram that we'd read it and we'd, or we're reading it and we'd love to have him come join us on the book club thinking you know he's a bit of a yeah, global star, ultra icon <laughs> yeah and then pays to be cheeky doesn't it because he only went and said here's my email email me and let's sort something out i'd love to meet your club i think he said didn't he i'd love to meet you so um i emailed him and then i think like two days later i said to alan oh i haven't heard anything back i think it's just all bluff and then he did reply and then we had him on and he was great, wasn't he? Another think, really it was, humble. It went on till about ten o'clock, didn't it? It was he. He was the one who didn't want to leave. He he stood up the whole time as well. Like that man doesn't even sit down <laughs> during a <the> Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, he was great. If you, if you I thought, we never recorded those. I don't think we. Yeah, we had the technology them. at the time. I've but Dean taught us how to stand up, roll a twelve-inch pizza, and run at the same time. So if nothing else, that's a handy life hack to have, isn't it? What a legend. Yeah. What a legend. It was great. Now, Kim, we'll just talk about what's been happening recently because you've been on the bench for a little while, haven't you? But you're fighting your way back. I've been on the bench for a long while, it seems like. The problem was I turned my ankle back in August last year 
And if I'd have known that it wasn't a sprained ankle, that it was perineal tendinosis, then I would have stopped running straight away. But I didn't. And because it didn't really hurt while I was running most of the time, I kept on running and I kept on training for the virtual London Marathon. And I can remember saying to the guys, the, the South End guys, you know, like, I know this isn't right, but if it was that bad, I wouldn't be able to run, surely. So it was one of those very, very naughty situations where I said to myself, I'm going to carry on, get the virtual out of the way, and then I'll go and see a physio. And yeah, and that's when I found out I had the uh, MRIs and, and yeah, eventually. So what was it, what, the, you know, it was a long name. What was the damage then? What had actually happened? It's the, it's the tendon that runs along um, down your leg, along the outside of your ankle and around the ankle and, and the bottom. I'm, I'm, I'm touching it like you can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I won't stick my foot. Well, I could stick my foot up in the air. Hang on. Oh, yeah, the, uh, for everybody who's doing their long run um, and now on Spotify, Kim <laughs> is raising her ankle towards the screen, so we can all have yeah. a look at the damage. Sorry about that. There's my foot, everybody. But yeah, it's the outer, it's the outer side of, of, of your foot, of my foot. Um, yeah, so um, uh, it was. There's like a sheath in the tendon that was full of, I don't know, fluid. Yeah. I can't even remember now, but um, yeah. So I had to. I ended up having to go into hospital and have a cortisone injection in it, and I had to have that under anaesthetic because they have to inject a dye into the vein so that they don't accidentally put the needle into the tendon. Um, so yeah, I had that done. I had to wear a boot for I don't know how long. Then I could walk for a certain distance. Then a bit further, a bit further then I was allowed to do couch to 5k so literally right from scratch um and I've gradually built myself up to do couch to 5k and I'm desperate I booked up the London summer um like ages ago thinking oh yeah I'll be better by then I'll be fine and I've had to work really kind of hard and carefully to get to to where to being able to do it on Sunday so it's been a long old slog i've had exercises i've had physio i've had the lot and it's been pretty soul destroying at times i have to say so on that point kim how have you kept yourself going mentally because you know touch with i've never had a long layoff and i get <laughs> terrible just watching fomo if i'm not running it's, some race on a saturday so to be laid yeah. up so long how did it's you just get yourself to it mentally it's been really hard and i'm not going to lie there have been tears and yeah. frustration um but i have kept myself i i thought the best way for me that there's kind of two ways you can go isn't there when you're injured you can just take yourself away and just go and feel sorry for yourself or wrap yourself up in something completely different and at one point i thought i'm never going to run again and i was very close to that point but being doing the social media stuff actually helped i thought i'm just going to throw myself into this i'm going to embrace everybody else's running and um doing that i went and i took up photography as well because that kept me outside um so <laughs> i used to put my boot on and hobble out and around and take photos and i took photos of um the south end guys when they were doing their wednesday night satellite clubs and um all sorts of stuff but yeah and I came along to the run through um oh, it must have been about a month ago now even longer perhaps we did a run through at the Olympic Park so I went and took some photos with Miles Gom who's who's also a photographer he's given me lots of lovely tips as well um so yeah I think that's that's what's kind of kept me going is is actually keeping in with with the group and in with other runners and um being interested in what they're doing and being supportive of them because they've been really supportive of me yeah i think we'd have noticed if you'd gone quiet and gone missing in action we'd have come out looking for you, you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and on that on that point with your recovery now how are you how are you coping with just having to be patient 
because probably oh. the expectation is to just go out and smash it every week, isn't it? Patience isn't my virtue, as no. anyone who knows me will know. But um, I, I've had to be. And do you know what? This is this is a funny, but my physio said to me, um, she said, you've been so good doing the couch to 5K. She said, I've got lots of other runners um, who have got similar problems to you. And she said, and, I, and I'm using you as like the benchmark because you've done it and you've done it so well. <laughs> And I'm and in my silly little head. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm teacher's pet. I'm physio because I'm doing it properly. So that's kind of like made me want to carry on doing it properly. Yeah. Really. I've really noticed that, like seeing your Strava and things like that, how sort of like regimented you've been in doing this. It would be so easy to get carried away. Yeah, I really, really, really admire your self-discipline. Yeah. And she did say to me, we, we got to 5K and she knew that I had this 10K coming up. And I think I only had like three or four weeks. Now, I said, she said, what are you going to do about this? And I, I said, how about if I download a 5K to 10K app and do that? And then I'll go as far as I can with that. And then when it comes to Sunday, wherever I'm at on that, I'll do and I'll walk the rest. So that's what I've been trying to do. I have been a little bit scuppered this week because on sun last Sunday at work I hurt my back. <laughs> so I, I, oh god, I'm such a wreck. But yeah, it, it, I, <laughs> I've 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 only run. I walked. I actually, I've been a bit naughty. I'm going to confess. I've been. I I walked six miles just to see that if it worse it's worst case scenario, I'll walk it. Mm. And I know I can do that in an hour and forty minutes now. And um, I did actually run, walk 6K on, um, not 6K, six miles on uh, Wednesday. And my ankle, I have to gauge it that the injury, the reason I have to be really careful is I'm fine. I can be fine running. It's the next morning when I get out of bed. Um, and that's when it kind of seizes up and I feel the pain. So I have to gauge it by how I feel the next morning. And after I did the six miles on Wednesday, Thursday morning, I got out of bed and I was all right. So great. Fingers crossed for Sunday then. Great. Yeah, yeah but, then, but well, you know, you've got you've got a 10K Sunday, but before that, you've got an even tougher task because you've got to out answer Alan's uh, questions in the lightning round. So uh, we better do those. Oh, God. Welcome back, Kim. Thanks. How are you feeling? I, I'm, I'm a bit sweaty now. No, it's, it's not that bad. You do know all the answers. No one's failed the test yet. Trust okay. me. So, 10 simple questions. I'll just fire them out. Give us your first thoughts. So, what's on your bucket list, race-wise? New, New York Marathon. Yeah, okay. Pre-race well, breakfast. Once I've done London. Oh, sorry, that. after you've run London. Yeah, because I'm I'm in London. I've got to get that done first. But right. New York after that. Sorry. And there's only four more majors to tick off. Mm -hmm. So in preparation for London, then what's going to be your pre-race breakfast? Oh, I always have um, porridge with some honey and chia chia seeds. Oh, I like and, chia. Yeah. yeah, and and a banana. Okay. Favorite distance to run? Um, half marathon. Cool. Adidas or Nike? neither neither okay no. <laughs> favorite brand of running shorts um i actually really like the run through ones cool. oh happy stride all right getting a local local brand yeah, in well, happy yeah. strides, they're, they're really good because they've got anything with a pocket for your phone yeah okay coke or pepsi neither but pepsi if i have to if you had to right yeah. Summer training for a long winter marathon or a winter training for an early spring marathon? Summer. Summer training? Yeah. Hot and sweaty, but in your shorts? In the morning. It's lovely. Cool. Road yeah. or trail? Road, but I want to do trail. Right. Something to build to. Mm. Your one song playlist. Remember, you're running a marathon, so it's going to be in your head for at least four hours. Oh, my God. One song playlist. Oh, God, you should have told me this before. So I can no, because then you've had time to think about it. 
That's not the point. Um, Tell us later. I might I, give you a clue with the last question. I get, I'll give you a clue with the last question. Evita or Rocky Horror Picture Show? Oh, what are you doing to me? <laughs> what, not my choice. I like but Rocky Horror. Okay, that's yeah. it. I told you. Easy. <laughs> run the... Run the Thanks for that, Kim. I think if I was living in South End, I'd be a summer trainer as well, down on the coast rather than. Uh, You've got to get up early way. and see the sunrise, right? Before it gets too hot, it's the best time of day. Oh, it's great! Well, thanks ever so much. An exhaustive <laughs> biopic, brilliant <laughs> stuff. Thanks ever so much for coming on and uh, giving us an insight into your training and your running journey. That's absolutely brilliant. Tobe, have we got any questions or anything? I think we have an email in. Did we, uh... Oh, an email. We do get emails, folks. We do get emails. Our email man is not with us today. No, but... that's that's why we've just got to load it up. I, I've yeah. got it in front of me. It's from a... Oh, well, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll that's, that's, crank it up. That's exactly what Chris does anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. No one noticed the difference. He sits there going, hang on, I should have been all it's somewhere. It's in my list, yeah. <laughs> so it's from, it's from a Rachel Thurlow. Uh, she says, hi, guys. Love listening to the podcast. So, oh, we like Rachel. Yeah, really. yeah, we like Rachel. She's she's good. Um, she's getting excited about the Great North Run. Oh, uh, as many of our listeners and, and watchers will be. Um, she's in wave 13 and her son's in wave 15. I don't know what that means because I've never run. There's great. loads of waves. It's about, oh, God, no, mate. I'm, I'm 17, I think. Oh, yeah. So uh, make sure you wear your 40 gear, Rachel. And you're, I'm sure you get loads of shout outs. Um, she's also signed up to do the Yorkshire Marathon. And oh, I see her there. She's coming yeah, down man. south. I don't know where she is, but she'll be down south for her first ultra in Essex this November. So I know, that there. was a packed calendar, Rachel. A packed calendar, but there's plenty of opportunity to learn all about all those different distances here on the podcast. So we look forward That's to hearing your, uh, your journey, Rachel, in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, and I'll see you in Yorkshire. That's my first one. That's where I'm going. So that's two weeks after... Um, Two weeks after London, 17th of October. So that'll be my first marathon. Really looking forward to it. And Great North Run as well next Saturday. Uh, John Burchett Sharp has sent us a super sticker. Thanks very much for that. Thanks for your support. Um, we, we've had a couple of other questions. Uh, Ian Lowe, very early on, wanted to know about carbon plated shoots, shoes, shoots, shoes, and do they really work for the non elites? Well, I think he's got a good audience to be asking, hasn't he, with us yeah. today? <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do they work clearly we haven't got chris so uh he's our elite runner but uh, uh I, I can i've got a pair in um i'm non-elite as you might have worked out um do they make a difference clearly they're not going to make me kick chogi um but they do make you run faster so i really really get the impression that they make a big difference if you've got a big something big to aim for i think if you're going for a i would imagine if you're going for a sub, say you're going for a sub four marathon and you're desperate to get a sub four marathon and you're currently the last time you did it in four four hours and five minutes then it might tip the balance but well, is it much more overstated than that half marathon and 20 minutes off a marathon so mm. uh, uh you know it worked for me but again i think it's what you're motivated to do you know if you are motivated to times there's loads of tech not just the shoes that will help you get there um, but if that's not your thing, don't worry about it. You know, there's probably a lot better things to spend your 210 quid on. So uh, I think it's sources for courses. Yeah, I get the impression yeah. it's not it, not a prerequisite for for success. But yeah, I wouldn't put anybody off. You know, if you've got the money and you want to give it a go, then. Yeah. And then you know, finally, just a few shouts out for different socks. So we've had votes in for Hillies, more miles, stents, and Beliga anti blister socks. So there you go. Um, so plenty of choice out there. Nice. There's for plenty of options. I've tried any of those. Right. Okay. So what are we up to weekend? Kim's doing the summer 10k. Al. Well, I'm I'm doing that one, Kim. So let me know what wave you're in, and if you if you conk out, we'll make sure we carry you over the no, finish. No, I'm in pink flamingo. Right. And we'll you can do the same there. for him if he conks out. Mm. <laughs> I think there's quite a few of us signed up. So uh, yeah. across the different waves, it should be a, a fairly good pink takeover on Sunday. Yeah, there's been a few sort of big, well, we've, you know, read the landmarks in the big half. There's been a few of uh, the uh, bigger races in London already. So I'm sure you'll get a good atmosphere and uh, it will go well. I we should both name the winter summer run. I've got no idea what to weather. 
what to wear because of the yeah. weather. Am I going in shorts or tights, short sleeve? I think I put touch for it the first time when I thought, didn't it? And it actually got called off. It was pre pandemic, it got called off because it was too windy or something. Didn't it? It yeah, was it was the Easter thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. the East time. Yeah, yeah, it was sort of like the, the, at the end of January. And then they had a huge, yeah, yeah Beast in the East type thing. And they said, no, we're calling it off. And they called it off the night before. Was it that short notice? I don't remember that. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah, yeah it was pretty short notice. Mm. So, yeah, so, well, wish you luck with that. Toby, what are you doing? You don't know, I suppose. Waiting on the man. Yeah, uh, plan to do a marathon pace half marathon if that makes sense um so yeah try, just trying to nail our pace over the half marathon distance but at our marathon pace trying to with an aim to really hit the splits so mm. we'll try and get them as bang on as we can the discipline on it that's that's the plan um but, yeah so that should be good. you're going to gunpowder to do that aren't you going to the park run and yeah sort of start park run and then keep on doing some loops i haven't worked out how many yet it might might be like nine nine laps yeah, what's the odd lap between friends, mate? You'll be fine. You'll love it. Yeah, but it's nice and flat there as well, isn't it? You know, you've got a good... Uh... Yeah, got the odd little up and down, but it's fairly, it should be quite a good pace. And the GPS is all right, except for the back straight as well. So to, to try and pace mm -hmm. it, it's a good, good thing to do. Well, I'm going to try and get my legs working again tomorrow after uh, my 20 miler yesterday. Um, I've not done much today, but um, I'll get out before work tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I wish everybody the best of luck wherever you're running. If you're doing your 20 miler this week, this weekend, you know, we wish you all the very best with that. Don't get too hot up about it. Don't worry too much. Make sure you have your breakfast. Put some tunes on. Put us on. You've got 11 episodes. Now, surely, that's 11 hours worth. Now, your long run's not going to be as long as 11 hours, so you should be able to keep you going by there. You're not going to run out of stuff to listen to. So we'd love to we'd love to come along with you. And if we do, let us know how you get on next week. We'll be back at 7 o'clock on youtube and facebook and uh, if you're not around if you're doing the tea or uh, you're not about on a friday night if you've got a social life like alan and you're out and about and you're going to concerts and festivals and things and you can't and you can't be at your computer on uh, at seven o'clock on a friday then uh, you can download us and take us with you on your long runs or your train journeys wherever you're going on uh, spotify uh, yahoo are we on google yet i don't know i can't remember but i'm um, usually mostly a usual sort of um sources for your podcast we're all there thanks thanks a million kim thanks ever so much for coming on thanks for having me it's been lovely brilliant debut i'm sure you know there'll be a big a big contract offer in the post for more regular uh, contributions i'm sure once the main man comes back you know but we can't we can't do anything we can't it's his name above the door so we can't make any offers what right now, what can you do i'm sure you'll be in touch thanks ever so much for everybody and we shall see you next week so enjoy your running